have all of the contributors and participants in the one KP endeavor. This is truly a community adventure and we've got um, over 100 people who've contributed materials and a whole team of people who've been analyzing data on behalf of the whole team. And so I'd just really like to thank all of them for all of their uh, contributions. Now, one might think that after over 20 years of collaborative phylogenetics of angiosperms, that our community would have solved this problem of the relationships among the angiosperms. And in fact, I think we have been very successful in resolving many of the key nodes in angiosperm phylogeny. However, a number of questions still remain, and these are due to various um, sorts of issues. There is sometimes conflict among different trees or different partitions of the data. In some cases, there's lack of resolution. And in other places where there is actually resolution, there's poor support. And so we have a number of factors that have contributed to the fact that we still have a number of nodes that are not well resolved or not well supported. And so what I'd like, what I'd like to do today is just focus on a sample of these and what the 1KP data may, may say about these. So for example, um, the first of these um, problematic areas is the root of the tree. We've already seen some applications of variance data sets this morning um, that address the root of the tree. And the big question is, is Amborella alone the sister group to the rest of the extant angiosperms, or are Amborella and the Fialis in a clade that are then sister to the rest? There are also some questions about what the relationships are among the clades of the angiosperms. These are the Magnolias, the Chloranthales, Ceratophyllum, the Monocots, and Eudicots. And I'll review what some of those alternatives are a little bit later. There's also some question about the relationships of Saxifragales and Vitales with other roses. Uh, many analyses place Saxifragales as a sister group to the rest of these, but other um, analyses have actually placed these as sisters to each other, and that clade is sister to the roses. So again, we have some questions here. Another example is the comp clade. We already heard a little bit about this this morning from Doug, and this is a clade that's composed of the Celestrales, Oxalidales, and Malpigiales. And Plasta data have um, convincingly placed this clade with the Fabids in the rosid clade. Um, mitochondrial and nuclear data have placed this with the Malvids, and this uh, requires a little bit more attention. So this just illustrates this, uh, where we have the COM plus uh, Fabid clade with the Plasta data. Um, COM plus Malvids with mitochondrial data and also with nuclear data. And one hypothesis to explain this was that there may be, may have been some ancestral reticulation that yielded um, the COM clade itself where its plastid genome was contributed by the Fabids and the mitochondrial and the majority of nuclear genes from the Malvid ancestor. So this um, requires some further investigation, and certainly the 1KP data set with this vast number of nuclear genes may have something to say about that. Some other questions, uh, the Delaniaceae um, are sometimes placed as sister to the whole rosiclade, sometimes to the Asterids, sometimes to this whole group. We really don't know where this family goes. And then within the Asterids, our recent analyses have been placing Santillales and Curiophilales as part of a very large asteroid clade, but um, not with particularly strong support. So we're wondering if the 1KP data may actually help with this as well. So as you've already seen, the 1KP data are contributing a huge amount of new data to um, the green plant clade, and um, these new sequence data um, will be very useful in helping us resolve many of these problems. So here's the 1KP um, complete tree based on 410 genes and 1021 taxa. The angiosperms are this part of the tree, um, representing over half of all of the species. Um, and the analysis and the results that I'll be describing come from 410 genes for about 140 taxa. And this is based on uh, Raxanol um, super matrix analysis that um, includes only the first and second codon positions. So here's a um, slightly larger version of that tree with a few of the major clades noted, monocots, magnolias, chloranthales, the asterids, and the roses. And we'll be dissecting this tree to investigate some of the relationships that I posed those questions about just a minute ago. So first of all, the root of the tree. So uh, here we see very clearly that Amborella 
is the sister group to the rest of the extant angiosperms. Uh, there's a 99% uh, bootstrap support value for the nymphiae and F, and also 99% um, bootstrap value for um, for the Osterbailey included with the rest of the angiosperms. So the su su subsequent sister positions of Amborella and the nymphiae are strongly supported here. Ceratophyllum, one of the nymphiae clades is then the sister group to the um, rest of the angiosperms. And here you can see the beginnings of the monocot clade. And for those of you who are interested in monocots, I'm not going to say too much about monocots. Basically, this will be it, that um, Acorus, in fact, comes out as the sister group to the rest of the monocots, as we've seen for, um, with many, many other data sets over the years. So um, the next thing that I'd like to address is the mesangiosperm relationships, and these are the relationships among monocots, magnolias, chloranthales, and um, digidicots, with ceratophyllum thrown in there as well. And just about any topology that you can imagine has been found in one um, publication or another, and this just shows this range of relationships among these clades. So what did we find? We found ceratophyllum as the sister group to the rest of the um, um, mesangiosperms, monocots, then magnolias, with chloranthales and eudicots actually forming a clade. But note that these um, nodes are not very strongly supported. However, within the uh, magnolias, we actually see some very um, nicely um, resolved relationships, typically those relationships that we've been achieving through plastin analysis for several years with Laureales and Magnoliales sister to each other, and Piperales and Canales. <coughs> now if we move um, into the, um, the Eudicots, there have been questions again about the placements of Vitales and Saxifragales relative to the rest of the roses. Very interestingly, in this particular tree, uh, we actually have the Santalales and Caryophyllales budding in at this point in the tree. And so these two problematic areas that I mentioned before are actually coming out together. So uh, we see here a clade formed uh, with Vitales and Santalales um, together, and then Saxifragales are next. And then the Caryophyllales then are actually a sister group to the rest of the roses, which are up here somewhere. Um, what you may be able to see if you're sitting close enough is that these uh, bootstrap values are all quite low. And so, um, Despite the fact that these clades are uh, well resolved as uh, monophyletic, the relationships among them are um, not well supported and perhaps a little suspect. So moving on to the comp clade example, again this is the clade of Celestrales, Oxalidales, and Malpigiales that based on uh, plastid data are within the FABIDs and um, that's how they're recognized in APG3 for example. Um, but with mitochondrial and nuclear data, they've um, emerged with the Malvids. Um, we see here that the conclade is not completely a clade. Uh, we have a clade of the um, of Celestrales and Malpigiales here, and then um, actually um, Oxalidales are this other clade here. In addition, um, none of the other, neither of the other two clades um, emerged as monophyletic. The Fabids are almost monophyletic, they're here, but then um, Zygophyllales are actually here, sister group to the Mertales, and this part of the, the Malvids. And then um, we also see um, the Geraniales down here. So the Malvid clade is actually split into three parts with the majority of the Malvids here. But what we do see is that the Com species, mostly clade, is essentially associated more strongly with the Malvids than um, with the Fabids. And again, um, this is in agreement with other nuclear data that have supported the placement of the majority of the genes analyzed from the conclave with the Malvids when the nuclear genome has been um, analyzed. And again, we think that this represents an example of ancient reticulation and um, as Doug mentioned earlier, these opportunities to investigate um, discordance between the plastid tree and the nuclear tree will give us um, some opportunities to look into some of these other possible ancient um, reticulation events. Dolan ACE, um, this is a, an 
unusual position, but just about anywhere Delinea shows up is an unusual position. Um, here we see it as the sister group to Genera, and then these two actually have um, a position nested a bit inside the um, chorine die cuts, rather than where the um, where Genera typically sits as the sister group to the rest of the chorine die cuts. So this position, despite this high bootstrap support, is um, actually um, needs some further investigation. Within the asterids, we see the major clades we would expect to see, the lamias, the companionids, although there's a, a bit of non monophyly of the companionids, and the um, ericales and the corneales. And the sister group here, and I haven't written this on the slide, but this red stripe here represents the baroberidopsidales, which are then sister group to the rest of the asterids. And this is a fairly typical relationship for that clade. However, what's unusual about this clade is the fact that Ericales and Cornelius actually form a clade with 99% bootstrap support. And so this is an unusual placement of these two clades, which typically form subsequent sister groups to the choristeric group of the Lamias and the Campanulus. So we see a number of points of incongruence. Um, the Chlorinthales popping up as sister to uh, the Dicots is fairly unusual, although not unprecedented. We see within the roses that saxifragales and vitales have placements that are not particularly typical. And we see that um, these, none of these three actually forms a clade, although um, the support for the relationships there um, um, is not very strong. Within the asterids, we see this Cornelius and Ericales sister group, which is unusual. And again, Santalales and Caryophyllales were found with the roses rather than with the asterids, which is where they typically have been showing up in recent analyses based on multiple genes from other sources. So more detailed analysis and comparison with the plastid tree is ongoing, and we will be investigating some of these sources of incongruence over the next few months. And we still have a few lingering questions. So whereas the root and the conflict issues seem to be resolved fairly clearly and consistently with some of the other information that we have, we still have questions about the mesangiosperms, Deliniaceae, Santillales, and Caryophyllales. And we think that some of this may be due to the, the analyses that have been conducted to date, and in fact, uh, we're going to be extracting the angiosperm data and analyzing those um, with uh, perhaps better alignments relative to the angiosperm data, and also um, this may allow us to extract more genes and then we'll reanalyze those new alignments. So to conclude, these phylotranscriptomic data from 1KP pose, pose some challenges with assembly alignment and analysis. Uh, a lot of the key angiosperm relationships are supported, but others are still uncertain, and some further analysis is required to address some of these incongruences and places that still lack resolution. And I said in the abstract we'd talk about marker minor, but we're not talking about that. I just thought I'd mention it. And um, with that, oops, something happened to my acknowledgement slide and disappeared. So anyway, thanks to GAIN and the 1KP Consortium for um, all of the 